Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial on rotoscoping in Mocha for After Effects. Now so far, if I go back to After Effects, we've looked at masking in After Effects and we've also looked at shapes in After Effects, shapes from Mocha and the fact that it is much better and much lighter and quicker rendering to actually use masks when you can but when you have to track it's better to use shapes from Mocha that you can bring across and we've actually looked at drawing in Mocha and bringing shapes across and uh, that's what this candle is over here. However, if I turn those effects off, you can see that we've actually got the whole layer in here. And I'm going to go back to Mocha for After Effects, because what we need to do now is actually talk about rotoscoping this man out to take him away from the background, which is what we actually want to do. Now, to do this process, what we need to do is track planes and then create shapes that we link to those tracks. Now, what do I mean by planes? Well, I don't mean aeroplanes. What I mean is that the face of this man, we're going to be particularly looking at the face and his body, have different planes of movement. So his ear is going to move in a different plane to his nose. The top of his head is going to move in a different way to the side of his head. So what we need to do is track the different planes that are moving so that we can actually make sure that we can link an appropriate shape to that plane. Now, the areas that we need to consider are the edges because the middle can be filled with any shape. As long as something is filling this area, it will be visible. But these edge areas, particularly around his ear, at the top of his head, and the side of his head, this side, are going to need careful tracking and shapes that link to the edges of these so that we don't see the background and have a nice edge at the side. His shoulders here are moving in one plane. They move forwards or they move backwards. They don't tend to be one shoulder moving forward while the other one's moving up. They tend to be moving together so we can do one or possibly two tracks for his shoulders and make sure we can cover those through but what I'm actually going to look at is doing a rotoscope for his face. I'm going to do two bits. I would generally do more but I'm going to do two. I'm going to rotoscope the ear because that's this plane which looks sideways and then the front of his face is covered by this plane here and what I really need to look at is this changing area at the side of his face. Now if I push play so you can actually see this you'll see that this ear is moving in a different plane to the side of his face but most of all you'll see that this is the area that's going to be most difficult because it is changing. His ear is staying the same shape just moving whereas his skin here as he talks moves up and down and in and out. So if I just push play you can have a little look. Now if I try to take tracking information from here and apply it to the front of his face, I'll get some really weird results because this area is moving in a different plane to the front of his face. This is why I will need to do a track for his ear, a track for the side of his face, and if I was doing more, I'd certainly need to do a track for the top of his head and a track for possibly one side of his body and the other, although you may get away with a track for one, but I think it would probably be better to do a track for one half and then the other just to get the end result. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to track his ear and I'm going to track the side of his face and then I'm going to draw the shapes and apply them just to show you how it's done. Now I'm not going to also do the whole thing. Sometimes on a layer you don't really want to do the whole bit and I'm going to do just for the sake of time really. I'm going to go to sort of this point here and you'll see that we've got a beginning and an end icon here so that we can set an out point. And I'm going to set an out point for this layer here so that we're just going to be tracking between those two parts. Now, you really need to move to the best view of the area that you want to track, which is probably in this small area, actually at the beginning. And then we can zoom in holding the Z or the Z key, and the X key right next to it, we can pan to the right place, and then we can draw our track. We already have two layers, incidentally. I'll just uh, quickly show you those over here. Those are the ones that we created earlier for doing the candles, but we're not going to be looking at those or using those. Okay, so let's draw a tracking area to define the area that we're interested in. And to do this, we're going to use the X spline. This is the X spline up here. 
because this is a very quick way of drawing a good area for tracking. You don't have to be too accurate for tracking. You just want to include the area that you want to track within it and it'll do the trick very well. So choose the X spline and we're going to draw around this ear. And then you can either right click or go back up to the beginning point to undo. Now the X spline gives us these tensioner handles and you can slacken them off to get a better area which might be better for you if you're trying to look at the ear so I might slacken mine off a bit to cover the ear up properly and you can see up the top here in the, the top left we've got a zoom window showing us where we are with all of these points but that looks about right for me um, and it's set a point my current time indicator happens to be in the middle at that point which is absolutely fine because when it comes to tracking you can track forwards and you can track backwards now I've got the play controls which we used before, but these, the ones that helpfully say track, are the track controls. So I can track backwards, or one frame backwards and stop. I can track forwards one frame, or completely forwards to the end of the area. So we are just going up to this point here, so I can track forwards to see what it looks like. Now what I'm looking for when I do tracking is drift. I want to see if this area, the red ring here, is going to stay in relative distance to the item it is tracking. In actual fact I'm going to move this one in just a tad. I want to see if the relative distance is staying the same. In other words it hasn't picked up a feature on this black background that it finds interesting and starts to track that and this distance increases and gets worse. Okay so I want to look at this track while I am tracking. It is very tempting to want to do all my tracks in one go and hit play and let them move through. But in actual fact, if you want to do tracking properly, you want to watch what you're doing. So you want to do one track at a time. So we're going to start with the ear, and I'm going to track forwards, and then I'm going to come back to this point, and I'm going to track backwards. So let's do track forward, which is this button here. And keep an eye just to see if there is a relative drift. Has it picked up something it shouldn't do, or is it managing to maintain that distance? It's got to the end and that looks okay, so I'm now going to pull that back to that first point and I'm going to track backwards. Again, keeping an eye out for relative drift. How's it doing? To me that's looking very good. Okay, so now we have actually done the tracking. If I push play, I can actually have a look at it. Sometimes it's a bit slow first time through. Let's click play and have a look or hit your space bar. And that looks to me to be relatively good. Now there are ways of checking to see how good your track is. And the first thing you've got is something up here which is called the Show Planar Service. And when you click on that it creates this oblong where you can change the points. Now when you grab hold of a point, look up here in these zoom windows you can see exactly where you've moved them to. Which is actually quite helpful. So I'm going to take this top left hand one and move it to the point where his hair and his ear meet. I'm going to take this one over here and move it to a point in his ear, perhaps just at the bottom of his sideburn there. Take this bottom one and I'm going to move it to the point where his ear and his face touch. And this last point I'm going to move to, say, the bottom of this feature on his ear. Okay, now, as I play through, I can watch that particular item and see how well it fits. So I push play, is it going to stay in place? You know what, that looks very good, but there's more you can do. I'm going to push stop. You can, if you like, add a little something in here to see how it looks. If you look down here under layer properties, you've got something that says insert clip. If you click insert clip, you'll see that you've got something that says logo. Click on logo, and there's the logo looking like an earpiece. And if you hit play, see if it looks like it belongs on his ear and is staying on his ear. And in fact, that one is very well. Alternatively, under logo, you've got grid, so you can stick a grid in there see how the grid looks and you've got different grids that you can try that's basically showing me that I've got a really good track if I had a problem with that track however I could adjust it in this adjust track tab down here when you click on the adjust track tab it sets keyframes wherever your current time indicator happens to be for the four points of this planar surface and it's saying these are the points or these are the reference points that you want to use. 
And then what you do is, perhaps using the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can go forwards and backwards, and you can see if there is any drift from the point by looking at these two zoom windows, so the master frame and the current frame. As you move through, you can see if there is any drift. And if there is a drift, you actually go to the point of furthest drift. You don't go as soon as it moves and start doing it there. You go to the point of furthest drift, and then you would adjust the track. Now, this is tiny, tiny drift, as you can see, but there is something. Now, if you look down here, you'll see that this is the corner that's selected, which is this one here. If you want to, you can either click on the points, or you can click down here and at the bottom here in the Adjust Track tab. And then you have the option of clicking a few buttons. You can click Auto, which will try and bring the point back to its original placing. So if I click Auto, have a little look and see if it moves. There, it moved it just a little bit to bring it back to where it was. But also, at the same time, it created a keyframe. So now that I've done one, I want to go through all the other tracks and see how accurate they are. Well, that one's pretty much bang on, but if I click Auto, have a little look. It's made a minor adjustment. How about this track here? It's showing me, again, it looks pretty much bang on, but I can click Auto and see if it makes a change. Very little. And in the bottom right, that one looks bang on. Click Auto, hardly any change at all. But what if it gets it wrong? I think that's moved it over a little bit too much to the right. Well, I can click this left tab and move it back to where I think it should be or move it up. Or alternatively, you could just grab it and move it over here. So that's how you can adjust your tabs, but do not adjust every change. Always move to the point of most movement from the original. And when you get to that point of most movement, which we've got a point there, that's the place where you make the change. You don't change it on every single one, you just go to the point of maximum drift, and then you make your change. This, this happens to be an extremely good track, so I'm not going to have many changes I want to make. But that's how you would adjust your track, by using the planar surface, which I'm now going to turn off. We've now created it, and go back to the track, track, if you like, down here. And I can select my layer, I can turn off tracking, because I don't want to track it anymore. It's been tracked, turn this off. In fact, I can lock it if I want, but before I do that, I'm going to name it, so I'm going to double click it and select it. And I'm going to call this my ear track. Because this is something with tracking data that will be useful later on. So I can hit return. And you know what? I don't even need to see it now. So I can actually turn off the eyeball. And if I want to, I can lock it. It doesn't really matter. It's gone. It's an ear track. It's tracked. I don't need to see it again. But what I need to do now is track this side of his face. So I'm just going to hold the X key and just shift him across so I can get a better look. And again, I'm going to take the X spline and I'm going to track this totally different surface. So this surface is on the side of his face looking sideways, this one is at the front of his face, and this is the area that I'm particularly keen on tracking. And bearing in mind this is a stretching and moving piece of skin, what I want to do is actually get fairly close to this piece of skin and allow Mocha to detect the changes, which I can then apply to make my rotoscoping look better later on. So with my X spline selected, I'm just going to click along this edge reasonably close so that there's not a lot of chance of it picking up a feature behind. And I'm just going to carry on clicking until I'm happy with what I've done. That looks okay to me. And then I probably want to keep relatively close in. I just want to track this area. And I can either right click or go back to the end point there. Now that's my track ready to go. So I'm at the beginning now, so I can just track forwards to the end. So just click the track and watch for drift. So as I click track forwards, and see if we're going to drift at all. And so far, it's looking pretty good. Keeping my eyes on those points as it moves through. And it's done. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit the spacebar to have a little look. And as you can see, it's stretching beautifully with the skin and giving us a really, really good track. Now, what if those points are out? Could I use the same process as I used in the previous one? So I could take the planar surface. Well, you could do, but bearing in mind that this is a stretching and moving area, it could look quite weird. So we'll try it anyway. Let's go back to the beginning, 
and let's take this first point and move it to the edge of his skin and the second point maybe to the edge of his eye and this third point don't really know because his skin's moving a lot at here maybe onto his freckle here and this last point maybe onto the edge of his skin at the same place now let's add a insert clip let's add a, a grid let's just push play and see how that looks actually that's pretty good that is pretty good so we know that that looks fairly good if we want to adjust it we can choose a suitable point here and as soon as we click this adjust track tab we will get those points that we talked about before so let's click on those and there are our points so let's start with the top left that's where the master frame was and now I'm going to use my scroll wheel of my mouse just to scroll forward and see how it looks now seeing this wasn't an absolute point which is a bit of an issue really it wasn't a particular point that we can reference it's quite hard to get it right so I'm not going to make a lot of change maybe we've got a bit of a drift there so I've got a bit of a drift there at that point again I can hit auto or I can just drag it into place now this is actually adjusting the tracking information which is quite important to realize that it's not just changing this little piece of information up here this 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 planar surface it's actually changing the tracking information to make it more accurate let's just go through all the other points and see what they're like at that point there's the current frame the original frame now the problem again we have is that this skin is squashing and stretching so if we change the tracking information at this point we could actually have ourselves a whole bunch of problems so I'm not actually going to do this I'm going to turn off this planar surface and I'm going to go back to my track I'm going to turn off the grid because I think if I make too many changes bearing in mind this skin is actually squashing and stretching I could end up ruining my tracking data over on my ear it's fine because there is no change but because this area over here is constantly changing if I use the planar surface I might actually muck the whole thing up because relatively this freckle from the edge of his skin could change considerably over this very short period of time so what we need to do is really keep our eye on what we have here and check that we're happy with it do we feel that it works and it looks about right however we might have made quite a difference even with the changes we have made so if that's the case the ideal thing to do is control Z a couple of times there you go I've undone it and you can see the difference it made before that was zooming up and down the face simply because we changed that one point there but now I've control Z a couple of times I've got back to how it should look now if I want to make a change to this and I'm not happy with the way it looks all I simply need to do is physically move to a point and change these points and it will add the keyframe in I don't want to use the adjust track for this particular one because you saw the relative problems it had because of squash and stretch but I can still change points and as soon as I change points you can see I've created a keyframe if I hit play now you'll see that that point moves in out in out so we have still made a change which will affect my tracking data so in actual fact I'm going to control Z because I don't really want that okay so I've got firm tracking data that I'm happy with now what I need to do with these two layers is use them as the basis for my shapes first thing to do now is, of course is to rename this layer so I can turn off tracking because I'm happy with it double click the layer and call this my cheek track okay so I've now got a cheek track I don't even need to look at my cheek track I know it's there I know it works the next thing I need to do is actually create my shapes which I'll show you in the next tutorial along with how to link those tracks to those mats that we're going to create which will give us an excellent rotoscoping effect my name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching <music>